Welcome to Winning in the Shadows. We're breaking down UFC 305. Drickus Duplessis in Israel. Adesanya, we're going to go through every fight, give you some predictions, best bets. We're recording this on a Wednesday night. Frustrating. Not not a lot of totals out. We like to really talk about you know some of the over-under um, rounds, so uh, we won't be able to give you as much as we uh, normally can when we do these videos, but... We're still going to pick some winners here. Let's start with Stuart Nickel and Jesus Aguilar. Uh, whatever I think of Australia and uh, good fighters I want to see, Jesus Aguilar is the first that comes to mind. So it's a good thing we're getting him <laughs> to, to lead this off. Um, I actually think this could be a really fun fight. I'm excited. I think this is a, a job well done by the, the matchmakers. Uh, two scrappy guys. Uh, who do you think wins this one? This is uh, an interesting way to start the fight. Like you said, you got Noche coming up, but they stuck Aguilar on the, on the <laughs> That's Australia That's a great card. point. I didn't even think about that. I think that says a lot about how they feel about him. Oh, um, oh, look, oh that's mean. That's from what mean. I from what I hear here, uh, Stewart just seems like the prospect that is brought in to win. Local guy, undefeated, debut, a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. A uh, little worried about how he's going to react to that. I don't think Aguilar is fantastic. I don't think he's super dangerous. I think this fight is really a lock to go the distance. I don't see either guy getting finished in this fight. I would lean Nicoli um, just from what I've heard about him. Uh, apparently, he's one of the top prospects in Australia right now. So, uh, no, I would lean that way. But you, you're going against UFC experience to start the fight. It's probably going to end up being a pass for me right out the gate as far as the bet goes. I actually kind of like Aguilar in this okay. one. Weirdly, um, I do. So, what I see about this one is I've watched Aguilar. He's he's really been a, a dog. Like, mm -hmm. like, like doesn't quit in, in some of these fights. Um, I mean, he... he, he Loses the Tatsuro Tyra, whatever. Like, you know, round one. Who cares? Um, does what he's supposed to do against Shannon Ross, which is knock him out in the first 30 seconds. Um, I thought this win against uh, Mateus Madoka was really interesting. Back and forth transitions on the ground. They t they're they taking each other down. A lot of this fight takes place on the ground. And sometimes Aguilar would get taken down because he is smaller, but he was able to reverse it. Now, Madoka doesn't use his donka to fight to, oh, with his, great, he's, he's great got one. some he's a dumb to donka uh with, with his fight aq uh, but i thought aguilar really did earn that split decision and i liked his i liked his athleticism and i loved his cardio and i think that cardio and just that never give up attitude is going to pay dividends this is a Stuart nickel that Look at these finishes, man. Round one, round mm -hmm. one, round two, round one. I've watched these fights. These guys aren't pushing him. The, the, Nickel is not being pushed in, in, some, in some of these fights that I've watched. Now, Nickel's going to try and take Aguilar down, but I just watched Aguilar, you know, uh, get taken down and reverse and have good, good success on the ground. Um, I think this is going to be a pretty nice uh, wake-up call for Nickel. Uh, yeah. um, I think all the pressure's on him. Aguilar has absolutely, yeah. absolutely nothing to lose. Uh, he's fighting this top prospect from Australia in Australia. He can let loose. I think you could do worse on, uh, on some of these underdogs here. So I'll start. Um, I will say if I, if I have to bet this with my own money, it is over. It's mm -hmm. going to be the over two and a half. Um, I think these guys are both really talented on the ground, and I don't see any cardio drop off from them. And I think they're both really scrappy. I don't see either of them finishing the other the only way maybe nickel gets maybe gets a random submission but i just don't see aguilar getting submitted uh to this guy so over is absolutely the way to play it but i kind of lean i'm not gonna play nickel in parlays i think if anything it, it, it might be a little sprinkle on aguilar so all right, one of our favorite theories is the uh, the, the work side hustle. You get to take this one, Kanan Song <laughs> and Ricky Glenn. So first of all, uh, explain the side hustle theory that we use in these fights. So I want to hear that you're a full-time fighter. I don't want to hear that you have a day job. I don't want to hear that you're selling some kind of magical cure for insomnia or <laughs> whatever weird business ventures that you can have. I want to hear that you're a fighter and there's side hustle. And then there's like guys that work a, a nine to five side hustle, like our friend, the plumber, Ricky Glenn was a plumber. Um, we had the mechanic, 
right? Shannon Ross was our mechanic. Fade the photographer. The mechanic, photographer. We, we, had the, we had the realtor. The realtor was <laughs> the, the, the best. Realtor. He had a UFC fight, and the first, the first picture on his Instagram was his business card. Yeah. Of realtor is using his UFC fight to promote his his realtor business. There's been Look, a few of them. It's it's good business when you're getting up there and you're not winning fights. You better start planning for the future. There's no we just saw a truck policy. driver, Tim yep, Johnson. Truck driver. We had a truck driver fighting Tennis Colts. Tim, Tim is <laughs> actually probably on the road right now. Hundred <laughs> percent. <100%. laughs> <laughs> Got to pay them bills. Um, Ricky Glenn, this it, 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 coming off two knockouts, first round knockouts. I mean, this has all the makings of just a violent short fight. So, uh, yeah, I like Song in this spot. I don't really care about his record and his losses and his low volume. I just I don't care. Um, all I need to know, I have everything that I need to know about this fight from Ricky Glenn. Now he is moving up in weight. Hopefully that'll help him. He's thinking. As far as uh, being able to take a shot, but the problem is the rest of these guys way more too. So I think it's kind of like a, a end of career lateral move here to try to just grab another W and see if he can get a couple more fights. And I don't think the night's going to end very well for Ricky Glenn. So give, give me song here. Give me song by finish. Definitely fight doesn't go the distance. Um, yeah. So, so I mean, songs lost three of four. I got to tell you, yeah, lost to Gary. He had moments against Gary. Um, Max Griffin, he did. Uh, Max Griffin is tough. Uh, he's got power beats, uh, Bedoya that, 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 that fight was pretty good. And then he, he lost to Giuseppe. I think Giuseppe may be better than, than I Giuseppe, thought. Giuseppe is way better than everybody thinks he is. I, I I've been I, on Giuseppe from the beginning. I fell into that mm-hmm. category. Now what's crazy is I bet on him. But yeah. I, was, I was like, eh, am I betting on Kevin Jusset? And now I'm looking back on, oh, yeah, we're betting on Kevin Jusset. Yeah, so, he's so, way better than people think he is. Yeah, I have I have Kanan Song uh, be, beating uh, the plumber, Ricky Glenn, for sure. Mm-hmm. Tom Nolan, uh, darling, coming from Contender Series last season, fighting the, can I say the corpse of, of Alex Reyes? Can I? Damn can I close, say, buddy. The ghost of Alex Reyes. Uh, I don't know line, if Rick and Mortis has set in yet, but he's very close. The line very is close. ridiculous. I mean, if ever there was a fight to get a hometown guy a win, it's this one. What are we doing with uh, Nolan? Nolan, the minus 1,400 or minus 1,200 Tom Nolan against Alex Reyes. I don't need to explain this fight to anybody, okay? Uh, you don't need a technical breakdown. Tom Nolan is a glass cannon. That's what it comes down to. He is the Jordan Wright of this division. He will either finish you in round one or he's going to be lazy and have horrible striking different defense, which he has, and he's going to get knocked out in round one. On the other side, we have Alex Reyes, who is just happy to have a fight at this point. I mean, he was though his whole battle, his last fight, was just getting to the cage after everything that he's been through. And it showed because he made Charlie Campbell look like a world beater. Okay. Uh, listen, Charlie Campbell's okay. He's no championship level fighter by any means. Um, I think this is going to be a finish in the first round. I, I just, if it's not a first round, the under one and a half is going to have my money once we get a line and a gauge on it. Uh, you can't play Tom Nolan at 1,200. You just can't. It's silly. Um, does he probably win? Yeah, he probably knocks him out in round one. But Tom Nolan, we said it his last fight. Defensively, dude is a liability if I have ever seen one in my life, and I do not bet on bad defensive fighters. It's that simple. Not at minus 1,200. Now, is Reyes the guy to take him out? Absolutely not. But, you know, with the way Nolan leaves his chin open, any touch of it could wobble it. So I would would even shorten the one and a half and just say it doesn't start round two. (laughs) <laughs> might, might be like, I don't hate it, man. It may be I, minus 300 or something. but that's I don't see how this goes five minutes. I don't. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if this next fight goes five minutes, uh, but I don't think it goes ten minutes. Jack Jenkins and Herbert Burns. I got to be honest, man. If you would have told me after his last fight against Julio Arce <laughs> that we would get another opportunity to bet against Herbert Burns, I would have said, no way the UFC is that generous. The UFC is not a generous company. And yet here they are giving us this lob, this grapefruit that we could knock it out of the park. This is about as bad as the Nolan and Reyes. Actually, I'm going to go worse. I- I'm going to go this is an even more layup uh, for Jack Jenkins because – Herbert Burns ain't finishing Jack Jenkins, and we know if this ra- if this gets past the first two minutes, uh, it's Jack Jenkins all day. How are we betting this one? 
I'm legitimately worried about Herbert Burns in this fight. For his Reason, legs, huh? Uh, dude, look, Jack Jenkins has broken multiple people's legs. <laughs> like, it, who else has that on their record? Ahmed from <laughs> from a contender series. I mean, broken, like, like, like legitimately fractured yeah. their legs. Uh, I think Jack Jenkins is going to weather the first minute and a half of Herbert Burns trying to get a takedown. How many leg kicks is it going to take? Two, three, before Herbert says, I don't want to fight anymore? Yeah. Not only that, we have no idea if he's even coming in healthy. The man has not come into a fight healthy. You know, that last fight, too. It looked like he had something going on with his knee when he went down against Arce. Yeah. So I would not be shocked if he's not coming in here 100%. And this is just a closeout of a contract. Do the UFC a favor. Get Jack Jenkins a win. Uh, again, fight is not going to decision. No way in hell. This is definitely going to be an inside the distance. Under two and a half, under one and a half. See what the lines are. Jenkins round one, Jenkins round two is kind of the... I mean, we... Full disclosure, we put this in... Mm -hmm. Oh, well, the, actually, within yeah. a, a couple hours of the line dropping on Jenkins, we put Jenkins in a play uh, that's up at Wager Talk. Um, we can't release it anymore because the lines moved drastically. But I couldn't believe when they released it around like minus five thirty-five. I thought that was a gift. It was uh, from yeah. the gambling gods on Jenkins. So yeah, Herbert Burns will quit. Um, he will get hurt. He will get quit, or you know, whatever. So. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, now we got a polarizing fight here. Casey O'Neill and Luana Santos. The floor is yours. What do you do with Casey O'Neill and Luana Santos? I don't know what to do with this one. Um, my gut says Santos, but there's uh, Casey's coming back second fight after that knee surgery. And we've seen the second fight fighters come back a little bit better. Now, that knee surgery, that knee getting better, is not going to help her basic striking. It's not going to help her bad striking defense. Um, something that was pretty interesting, she spoke about her last fight against Lipsky, that after she got rocked, she just couldn't get back. Like, like she got clipped with something early and just was in a fog. Like, she didn't know how the fight ended. She didn't have any recollection of the fight. So, most certainly concussed. Was that a shot that really you thought would cause that kind of damage in the fight? I don't think it was. I got some chin concerns about Casey O'Neill after that. And I know Santos isn't the biggest power puncher, but she could most certainly sting her and get into an advantageous position here. So I'm leaning more and more Santos as the, as the week goes on. Um, I just, uh, that, that durability could really be a problem for Casey O'Neill. She's never been somebody to avoid damage. And I think that might've came to a head in the Lipsky fight. Weirdly enough, I've had a good read on Casey O'Neill and it's, and it's, it's been very strange. And we, we talk about this and I, I really truly believe this. Jim will just get focused in on these fighters that he just knows how to read every yeah. single fight. I get these fighters that I just, for whatever reason, have a good, and it works out great when Jim and I are on the same fighter. I have, for whatever reason, had a really good read on Casey O'Neill. Uh, I remember uh, telling everybody, don't take the fight to go the distance against uh, baby Shevchenko. Mm -hmm. I was like, and there was a finish. Uh, I liked her against Modafferi. I gave big time warnings against uh, Jennifer Maya and Lipsky. Um, I think I think Santos is the play here. I think Casey O'Neill had a lot of I don't want to say hype, but it was kind of like a not a cult following, but just I don't know. There was a lot of underground Casey no, O'Neill. It, it was legit hype. I mean, it was mainstream hype. Now when she okay. burst on the scene, she was she was a girl people were talking about. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. and then you just look and see what's going on with her. And listen, man, some people just don't follow. Don't the, the knee surgeries? They're, sometimes they're just never the same. I really, really worry that that knee has affected everything about her. And Jim, you know, with injuries, it's not just the the part of the body that gets surgery. It's the ripple effects throughout the rest of the body. I think she looked way better in this run against Lara Fritz and Shevchenko mm -hmm. Modafferi than she has in her last two fights. I know it's bigger step up in competition. She, to me, she looks slower. Um, striking defense isn't there. And I like what I've seen from Luana Santos. Listen, finishing Agapova and Juliana Miller... It's not going to put you in the Hall of Fame, but it does show that she does what she's expected to do. 
Like, you're mm-hmm. supposed to finish Agapova in the first. You're supposed to finish Juliana Miller. You're supposed to beat Stephanie Egger by decision. So I think Luana Santos probably has the better uh, ground game, takedown game. I don't know if striking is going to be a big difference, but you're right. Casey O'Neill and this lack of striking defense is a big, big concern. The only way I'm playing it um, is Santos. I would not play Santos by decision because she can finish, and we've seen Casey O'Neill. Just in, a lot of her fights go under. Sometimes she wins, sometimes she loses, mm-hmm. but there's an element of violence and submissions in her fights. So under could be a sneaky play. I'm going to lean Luana Santos. I have not bet this yet, though. So maybe yeah. that maybe <laughs> that tells you that I'm not 100% yeah. sold on on it, and it probably says that there are just some better betting opportunities uh, on the card. So. Uh, if you guys could, please, real quick, hit the like button while you're watching this. If you're enjoying the gambling content, leave us a comment. Tell us who you like. Um, and also, don't forget to join us on our uh, live videos. We had such a blast on the Dana White Contender Series on time. Tuesday. Hit hit plus money live bet. Hit some other plus money bets. Just watch the body language of uh, what's his name walking out to the ring. We were like, <laughs> nope, this guy's not winning. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so we do take down live. Um, uh, I will probably be live for PFL that we'll both be there for the, um, the Australian card that starts at six 30 local time in the morning. I mean, just <laughs> like, that's not, it's not us. We'll be, we'll be here in the evening, but, uh, mm-hmm. imagine being, uh, Australian. You're like, wait, what time do we have to leave the house at four? What, t- what time do you start drinking? That's what I want to know. Whenever you, whenever you leave the house, it's Australia, the man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but please join us uh, on our live shows. And uh, as always, we like to share just, uh, you know, kind of some of our updates and um, how we've been uh, doing this year. It's been a magical uh, ride. We lost our official play at Wager Talk on Contender Series, thanks to Ming Ding, mm-hmm. um, who hit uh, Hamid too many times in his ding. And we got a point deducted. Uh, so, but the dream year continues. Plus 115.8 units. Uh, we've got some golf plays that are up. Those start on Thursday. And then we'll have PFL plays that are up, as well as UFC plays that are up. All those available at wagertalk.com. We've got a special. You can buy two months, get one free. Or if you just want to buy seven days for the price of three, that'll get you all of our official MMA plays on a nice six and two short term run. Uh, doing well th- last 365 days, doing well in 2024. So kind of all the metrics are are hitting home that we've really got uh, UFC, PFL on the right track. And we swept the PFL card last one. We uh, we had every single play we put out for PFL, we hit. So uh, if you could like button uh, and don't forget to subscribe, get all of our NFL futures, all of our PFL breakdowns, UFC breakdowns. Let's jump into Josh Coulibau. And Cardo Ramos, what do you make about this fight? I'm going to plant my flag in the ground on this fight. I know it's a weird, it's a weird hill to die on. I'm taking Ricardo Ramos to win it plus money. My man. I do not understand the infatuation with Josh Koulibau. I just don't. Every Koulibau fight, we get duped into thinking he's a good fighter. And he's not a good fighter for the UFC level. For the top level, if I had to ask you, tell me what Josh Cooley Bow does great, Mr. Lang. Uh, disappoint his betters? That's about it. <laughs> That's like... There's nothing he does that jumps off the page. He is just okay everywhere. Uh, I think he's sloppy. I think he gives up his back standing, which could lead to a problem against Ramos. Ramos is not going to stick his neck into a guillotine for the third time. That's just... It can't Are happen. you sure about that, though? I'm not making a bet where I got to do something <laughs> if he does, but I'm going to say it ain't happening. Um, I think that Cooley Bow is too wild, and he's going to give Ramos an opportunity to take his back. And once Ramos is grappling in his domain and on your back or in mount, the man is a dangerous, dangerous, dangerous grappler. So I, I don't think that his skid continues. I think at this point, Cooley Bow. He's just fooled people into thinking he's better than he is. He's got good cardio. I'll give him that. You know, is that going to be enough to win this fight? I, I just don't know. If this turns into a grappling match, I mean, you edge Ramos all day. So give me the person that is actually dynamic in one discipline of MMA at plus money. I will take Ricardo Ramos. My The big worry about Ramos is he's going to make, I'm going to say three gigantic fuck-ups. He's he's gonna do something stupid three times, 
And it's up to Cooley Bow to turn that into, I yeah. don't know, a KO, a, a finish. submission, a or could yeah. completely turn it around. If he doesn't take advantage of those stupid mistakes, yeah, it's it's going to be Ramos all day. So I'm with you that Ramos is, I mean, l- listen, if he makes the, the third dumb mistake, his camp's just going to be like, you know what? It's not us. It's you. So <laughs> yeah. you, you need to find another camp. You need to send him a breakup letter. We're, we're sick of working for months and months and months and months <laughs> only for you to flash knock out a guy and then for some reason insert your neck into his, <laughs> into his guillotine <laughs> choke. Uh, and then uh, quickly tap. So I have Ramos of plus money as well. So um, I don't know if this is going to be the most boring fight of the year, but I think it's going to be the most boring fight uh, on the card. Junior Taffa and Walter Walker, two of the, I mean, these guys have to be two of the top five biggest frauds on, on, on the UFC. <laughs> <laughs> on the on the US, with you with UFC contracts, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I can't think of one. I can't think of very many nice things to say about these guys' prospects here in the UFC. I, it, it's pretty obvious they're hoping Junior Taffa wins, but if Walter Walker gets a takedown, the round's over, and he needs three of them. And I know that the. I know the rumors are going around that that's why Carl Williams lost his fight because the UFC told him, you know, stop grappling and, you know, doing all that. And mm-hmm. that's the rumor coming out of Makaya. We got a couple guys. We'll get to the Gamrot fight, which is going to be an, uh, an interesting breakdown. <laughs> I just, I think Tafa's ground game is so horrific that you don't even need an aggressive takedown. You just need a halfway competent takedown and then you just neutralize the power. What do you make of Tafa, Junior Tafa and Walter Walker? Should we just pencil in this fight to go the distance right now? Probably. I, I, I like is, probably doesn't right, this man. check all the boxes of absolutely <laughs> atrocious heavyweight <laughs> MMA fight? I mean, come on, it's terrible. Oh, look at Walt uh, Walker's last fight against Bresky. Come on, man. We just saw Bresky get freaking annihilated. <laughs> Give me a break. All right, Junior Taffa, like you said, the guy's a turtle, he just can't get up. You just can't. You can't get up. I mean, no. No. it's ridiculous. And to stand there and get leg kicked by Rogerio de Lima when you know that's what he's going to do, he just played right into it. Uh, look at his win. His win. <laughs> Singular. No, no, Parker, Porter. Parker Porter. Give me a break. Uh, I think Usman this get just took two him down very and laid on guys. him. Just, just laid on him. Laid on him, man. Yeah. Initially, my reaction years ago for a fight like this was to play the under, and I've gotten very wise over the years too these big lumbering unathletic heavyweights once they get tired just the finishing equity is done absolutely done now walker's cardio could look fantastic with these pictures circulating around but we don't know what that is for mma shape i'll wait till weigh-ins till i buy into the instagram picture theory okay and there's a lot of good filters out there so yeah i'm I'm with you this is a good one to wait uh, until weigh-ins let's see what walker looks like Mm-hmm. If Walker looks like the bigger guy, he's going to take Tafa down. He's just going to lay on him. And here's the thing. Tafa, like, he has no get-up game, but he is a tough guy. Like, you're not going to ground yeah. and pound him out. Like, he's just – he's strong. He's tough. He just doesn't have the – he just doesn't have the, I don't know, the ability, the, the coordination, the training. These, you know, Tafas don't <laughs> – Tafas don't work on getting up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're like, yeah, if I can take it down, it's over. So um, I think it's it's probably Walker, um, but more importantly, let's see what it looks like. If Walker looks like he's going to be the bigger guy, then we just take it to go the distance. We've seen this a million times. Um, uh, Li Jing Lang and our boy, Carlos Prates, uh, at the end of each Contender Series video or live show, we award the BMF award, the, the best uh, fighter of the night. Then at, at the end of the season, we have 10 of them, and we award the BMF of the season. It's just something we do on our own. And Protez was the BMF of last year. And, mm-hmm. uh, boy, we're off to a good start with Kavanaugh, huh? Whew. Kavanaugh wins week one. Uh, he looks he looks like in the driver's seat for the year. Uh, Protez looked terrible in his first fight until he was winning. Did we just chalk that up to nerves, and now he's awesome again? Is that what we're doing with him? Nerves, yes. And I just think that Trevin Giles is a tricky fight. He, he just is. He's not a world beater but he makes fights close that's what he does so um look he did what he had to do <laughs> and and not just won a decision put him out when he saw the opening he took it 
um, heard a great breakdown on this, that Pratas, he's not a high volume striker. He's a sniper. And he almost brings the fight out of his opponents and makes them open up. And when they open up is when he takes advantage. Boy, is this a good fighter to open up. Yeah. I mean, Li Jing Liang is a march forward throw hammers <laughs> fighter if yeah. I've ever seen one. The only place I could see Protest get in trouble is if, if the leech ends up, you know, going right to the grappling. Um, but we've seen Protest be able to manage that. I don't think Lee's that good of a grappler where Protest is not going to have anything to do. Um, Protest is feeling himself. He's on embedded. They're building him up. This is a showcase spot. For him, no doubt about it. They know they have a star with this guy. I think this is just a teed up fight for him. Uh, Lee coming back for all these injuries. I can't buy on the guy. So I think this is another spot for Protest to just absolutely shine. And, you know, his next fight, we're going to be seeing him at minus 500 opener. It's it's just going to get so steamed. This guy's going to be a superstar. I agree. He's two fights away from being like the um, the contender series hype machine um you know they're searching for these uh, what, what 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 were they saying like when you put up the the board of like U, ufc fighters they're running now. the contender series is running ufc right now yeah, yeah yeah which by the way it does make sense you need somehow to get these guys from their current you mm -hmm. know promotions into ufc so of course it makes sense that contender series is by the way we're only a couple years off of there being not one but two seasons of contender series each year um, so it, it's kind of one of those where they brag about contender series and it's like, well, yeah, if those are the only people you book, of course, <laughs> <True. laughs> of course they're going to be, be from contender series. You dope. It's like when Dana White told, uh, Bruno Lopez and I'm not looking for 31 and 33 yeah. year old contenders. Well, don't book them. Your yeah. name's on the show. You moron. Um, so I'm with you. That Protez is a star. I, I think he checks all the boxes. Um, got a great camp uh, and everything. I, it's Protez by win. And uh, we're going to do the parlay buster and the woulda, coulda, shoulda at the end of the show. Protez KO. Uh, could be the woulda, coulda, shoulda. Guy's mm -hmm. got insane power. I like that. That the Not not the volume, but the sniper. It's good. It's real good. So That's him, man. Yeah. If you remember who that was, let us know because I don't want to be accused of, of stealing it. We, we want to give credit where credit is due. Um... <laughs> Tai to Avasa, Jorginho Rosenstrike. Uh, I know that. Uh, yeah. I'll let you go first on this one. What do you make of this fight? Tai to Avasa has a lot of side hustles going on. He's got a lot of side hustles going another on. Another one? We got another he's got side hustle. He's got an alcohol company. I think he's got two other companies that he's starting. That being said, I've never been a fan of Rosenstruck. I just haven't. Uh, I haven't been a fan of either guy's skill set. I think Ty is hopefully going to make this fight fun. I'm hoping because if he doesn't, Rosenstrike is the king of boring, boringing up a pay per view. I mean, it's just he's like watching paint dry. I've never been a fan of this guy's fights. Um, I think Ty's going to get in the pocket at some point, and we'll see how Rosenstrike reacts to that. He tends to not react well when he's you know forced and pressured. I think fight ends by KO could be an interesting line when that comes out. I don't see a submission coming. Probably not going to be a submission. <laughs> and I don't see it going the distance. So this might be one time where I kind of go against our rules and say fight ends by KO. Allow me to poke some just unbelievably gigantic <laughs> holes in Tai to Avasa's resume here. So, okay, so he beats Rashad Coulter. I I've been a UFC fan for a long, long time. I could not remember who that is. Cyril Asker could not remember who that is. Uh, beats Andre Orlovsky. I might be able to argue that might be his <laughs> best win because he loses to Junior Dos Santos, uh, Spivak, Stefan Struve, whatever. Beats the legend that's Harry Hunsucker. Uh, beats Granik Hardy. Mm -hmm. Augusto Sakai. These guys are long gone. Um Derek Lewis, is that strange a great, fight? That was a strange 2022? fight. 2022, is that a great win? I don't know. And it's then not. Just, it's a it's unmotivated. Derek Lewis. That, that was fight. that's what I mean unmotivated. So, 
And then just, I mean, he gets made mincemeat by Gon, Pavlovich, yeah. Volkov, and Ty Burra. Um, I think it's Rosen strike, and to be honest, I don't even think it's close. I think Ty Vasa comes out and just throws some monster bombs. I think he gets tired. Rosen strike pieces him up with the jab like he did, like he did Gaziv. Um, I'm not gonna fault him for you know getting choked out by Jailton Almeida. That was a nightmare matchup. Knocks out Dawkins. All right, loses to Volkov. Um, Blades. I know I'm. I know I'm making the same argument. I, I'm. I'm doing the same thing that I did with Tui Vasek. I'm ripping him for his wins and you know saying his loss. I just. I thought Rosen Strike looked really good against Gaziv. I thought he looked really good on the striking with the jabs. I think he pieces up Tuivasa, and if Tuivasa doesn't get him out in the first couple of minutes, it's Rosen Strike all day long. So Jorginho is going to be the pick for me. Uh, Mateus Gamrot, Dan Hooker, ooh, if the UFC doesn't want wrestlers to be winning, and if they're giving pretty specific instructions to camps not to wrestle, is it Gamrot number one on your list as far as these, as far as like. I don't know, title contenders or, you know, top guys. But at the same I, time, Gamrod's not changing his stripes. No. He? <laughs> so. If he does, it's, 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 we're really got to reexamine everything that we do with this sport. And yeah. you can convince Gamrot not to wrestle. That's the that's the <laughs> coy play of all time. Um, I don't think Gamrot's the same kind of wrestler, though. Like, he doesn't stop wrestling. He's exciting with it, at least. It's it's go, 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 go. Um very intrigued by this fight more so than I thought. When I first looked at this, I thought it was Gamrot all day, twice on Sunday. I don't know, man. Something something stinks. I don't know what it is. Something stinks. Maybe it's the time off for Hooker. He took all that time off after that broken arm against Turner. I don't I know. Mean, the, I mean, that's the the new and improved tattooed Dan Hooker. <laughs> or I, what I, is throwing me off on this fight? But the hairs on my neck are tingling for this one. That. I will. T- I'll tell you trouble. exactly what's con- what's concerning you is this this fight against Jalen Turner. This could be an absolute mirror image of it, where Turner's winning, and then Hooker, who doesn't give up and is just mm-hmm. a tough, you know, freaking guy, lands some big strikes and wins a close split decision. Gamrock gets clipped all the time. Yep. And like the recipe to beat Gamrock. I, Again, you can go through and poke some holes in in Gamrot's. I, yes, like, can. I mean, he loses to Gurum. Um, I actually, I kind of thought Gamrot won, but whatever. Gurum, that loss is not aging great. Gurum, you know, we thought Gurum was going to be the be all end. No, he wasn't. Mm-hmm. Scott Holtzman, <laughs> Stevens, <laughs> Fierre. <laughs> this win against Saruka is by far his best. Win. Like, not even close. That was an amazing fight. Loses to Darius. Barely gets the split decision. The leg injury, uh, and then RDA, RDA popped them a couple mm-hmm. times. Like, I don't know. It's not as dominating a performance as you'd want to see in this. And you got a guy that can't. He's not going to finish Dan Hooker. What's his? What's his? How is he going to finish Dan Hooker? Submission is the only way. He's not, but he's not but Gamrot's not Dan like a. Dan that's Hooker. what I mean. He's he's not like an insta back take kind of wrestler. It's yeah. very much folk style wrestling. It's not. The Dagestani style of wrestling that we see now. It's old school chain wrestling. And I don't think that puts you in a submission uh easier mm-hmm. than a new style of wrestling. Yeah. Um, I don't know. If you're if you're looking for underdogs, Dan Hooker, you can do a lot worse. Good number, man. Than, than Dan Hooker there. So yeah. I, I I won't bet this fight, but I, I, I certainly am not throwing Gamrot into my parlays. And I thought I would. Mm-hmm. Uh, when this fight, I was oh yo game rights going, but I'm, the more and more I look into it, I'm like eh, eh, I'm not really sure. So, Kai Car France and Steve Ursag. Steve Ursag was one round away from being champion after making his after what was his what what was if if you want to know how like I don't know kind of short on talent there is in the UFC. Never forget Gaziev had one fight in the UFC and then was in the main event, mm-hmm. and then. Ursag <laughs> makes his short notice <laughs> UFC against David Dvorak, and then a little bit later, he's just ah, he's just casually fighting Pantoja and taking Pantoja the distance. Uh, he's the rightful favorite here. Gets Kai Car France, we haven't seen in a while. Who do you like? If I was uh, in that division, I'd be calling out Matt Schnell like crazy because apparently, if you finish Matt Schnell, you get a title shot. <laughs> Never knew that was a thing. I didn't know he was the gatekeeper of the division. Um, I do think Ursag's skill set 
is better than I thought it was. Uh, I will, I will be very happy to sit here and say I was wrong about Steve Ursig. I thought he was about to get run through by Pantoja, and I hope it's not like the high point of his career is. Hey, I fought for a title once in my UFC run, as he's teaching him for the rest of his life. Um, <laughs> just it's better than I would ever do. <laughs> you go farther than me. Um, but I think that Kai is a little bit overrated in this spot. I've had a really good read on Kai Car of France. Ooh, love this. Okay. I've had a good read on Kai Car of France throughout his entire career. Um, did not think he was going to beat Albazi. Did not think he was going to beat Moreno. And I bet on him against Cody. I bet on him against Askarov. I bet on him. Did I bet? I forget if I bet on Roy Val or him. I don't remember. Um, but I've had a pretty good read on him, and I think he's a predictable fighter. You know what Kai does. He's a good striker, and he tries to keep the fight standing. Um, doesn't really have an offensive wrestling game to speak of. So I don't think – I think Ursaig is going to have the two dimensions. Kai's only dimension is going to be in the striking. The size of Ursaig, the gas tank of Ursaig. We've seen Kai struggle – with this exact kind of fighter. And I think this is going to be Steve Ursaig. Now, what worries me is I thought I was going to be slick. Apparently everybody likes Steve Ursaig. Yeah. So it scares me off a little bit, um, but I'm still going to say that Ursaig pulls out this decision. I think he, I think Kai is going to stay safe enough and this can be a real close split decision at the end. I, I, I have nothing more to add to it. I like Ursaig. I think his skills are just a little bit better than Kai Car France. And, um, the one thing is, uh, you know, Kai Car France is just into his thirties. Um, Ursaig's a few years younger and I know that doesn't sound much, but at flyweight, the years are, it's kind of a big yeah. deal. Um, I just, I think, I think Ursaig's on the way up. Kai Car France, I just think probably we've seen the best of him. If he, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Think about this for Kai Car France. If he wins, he just beat like one of the number one contenders that just fought Pantoja. Now he's right back in the mix. If he loses, he's on a three fight losing streak and he's lost to, like, <laughs> lost to the top guys. So you go from like, well, eh, maybe he's got to look at PFL or LFA or, you know, something like that. But if he wins, uh, so it's kind of a lot of like, I think Ursek's just a little bit better. I hope he's motivated. Um, I think he's going to be a, a nice addition to uh, to the UFC for, for a few years here in the flyweight. So. Main event time, Drickus Duplessis and Israel Adesanya. After this, we're going to do our parlay buster. We're going to do our woulda, coulda, shoulda, our bet at the uh, – it's the bet that at the end of the night we just regret we didn't lay the mortgage on. Mm-hmm. So, uh, But we got to break down the main event. Duplessis, Israel Adesanya, who do you like? I've been watching this line really close. Uh, if you followed us for a while or as Andy knows, there's a – I just don't understand how Drinkus gets these wins. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. It makes no sense. He looks like he's ready to fall over. He looks like both of his ACLs are ready to tear when he moves forward. He <laughs> flops on the ground. He falls over. He gets lumped up. And he just continues to win. So at what point do you try beating a guy who you don't think is that good, but you keep losing? I don't know if I got one more in me, but I just might. I've been watching this line intently, and they are refusing to give plus money on Izzy. Mm-hmm. The line has flipped. It's damn near even. And that is something that I have noticed throughout the years, that when the books refuse to give you plus money, they're very content getting that action in on there. Uh, I think the break would be is going to be really good from Izzy. Um I'm, I'm, I'm picking Izzy to win. I'm not betting it. But tell us, you have a great breakdown about Izzy and his career trajectory and what happened with him. So please, sure. tell the viewers. I th- I think this moment where Alec, where Alex Pereira got knocked out by Israel was, I don't want to say supernatural or, or I, 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 don't, I don't know what the word is. I think that was Israel's peak. I think he summoned every bit of energy, every every bit of <laughs> karma, I, w- whatever it is. It, it, if, if it was a video game, he had a special move that he could only <laughs> use once. Th- Jim, think about it. 
knocked out Alex Pereira cold. Mm -hmm. Cold. Not, not ground and pounded. <laughs> not like not like land some body shots and land him. Summoned this one massive strike that put Alex Pereira out absolute cold. And I just when I, I remember watching that and just like uh, like it, there was just like there was, it, was it, it just took your breath away. It was just mm -hmm. it was a moment. And I a I don't think we're putting enough into that moment. That 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 is an iconic moment. That yeah. is I mean that is Weidman knocking out uh, hindsight Zippo. now with the run that Pereira's on. Yeah, that's pretty that, that's what I mean. Who's yeah. beating Alex yeah. Pereira it gets now? Better by the fucking by the day. <laughs> yeah. So so here's the thing with with Izzy, and I will give a I will give an exact um, comparison to somebody that we're watching in real time right now, and that is Shevchenko. Mm -hmm. That it look at the look at the run. And the career that this man has had. He starts off in 2018 with Rob Wilkinson in UFC. And then all he's doing is fighting Batori, Tavares, mm -hmm. you know, you know, younger Tavares, Brunson younger, Anderson Silva, who, you know, was old, Gaslam, Whitaker, Romero, Casa. This he there's no way he should have tried to jump up and fight Yeah. 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 That was that was ridiculous. He comes back. Vittori, Whitaker, Cannoneer loses to Pereira and then gets the – that is a run that is so hard to do in the UFC. That is so much wear and tear on your body. That is so much mental energy. That is so much focus, and it just can't last forever. And I remember when you and I were doing our live show, when they showed Sean Strickland and mm -hmm. Israel Adesanya standing in the ring, I was like, there's something not right about Izzy. I think he just – I just don't know if he has too much left in the tank. The guy's 30. I mean, the guy's 35. How much more can you know, can you give to be at the ultimate, you know, peak? And I think I just I, I just remember that moment about Alex Perez or against Alex Pereira and just thought that was that was Izzy's peak. Mm -hmm. that, that was the guy that had torment literally tormented his entire career. It was the one yeah. guy that was the asterisk on his career. And not only did he erase all the losses, he did it with an emphatic yeah. KO that who's going to knock out Alex Pereira like that? Nobody. That's We're never going to see that. So um, Duplessis, there's these guys that just kind of figure out a way to win. Um, can I give you a Vince Young comparison? There you go. Yeah. Um, like, how does this guy keep winning? <laughs> like, Okay, we know he can run, but he can't throw that good. And then, you know, every NFL game, the score's 13-13 in the fourth quarter, and you're like, how? Um, and he, these guys just know how to pull out wins. And I remember I remember betting big on Duplessis against Marcus Perez. That was a funny moment. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, Tavares was a pretty good one. Darren Till, whatever. Brunson, that was when Brunson was at his, you know, it, it was, this time was done. And then he has that surgery. Remember the big thing about about uh, Duplessis? Oh, his cardio is not very nose, good. Yeah. Has the surgery, and all of a sudden his cardio looks better. Um, beautiful win against Whitaker. The Sean Strickland was could have gone either way. It was a really really good fight. Um, he's always got the wrestling kind of in his back pocket, and I feel like Duplessis looks more tired on the feet sometimes than he does on the ground. If he can get the clinch, get Izzy down, he's going to win big chunks of the fight. And I think that's what he does. My worry is that I just don't know too many people picking Izzy. Um, but I just, I, mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm standing by my guns that that Alex Pereira fight was Izzy's peak. And I just don't think you can summon that much energy for that for too much longer to fight guys like Duplessis who are at their peak. So the pick for me is, is Duplessis. So this would be a fun little head, Dad. This yeah. Is good. Yeah. Is good. All right, let's do the parlay buster. This is the fight that everyone's going to bet on. We're here to tell you, may bust your parlays. What do you think? What's one that, what's something that everyone's going to bet that's just going to murder him? Scroll down. Okay. You're going to, you're certainly not going with Tom Nolan. Jack Jenkins. Mm, no, not Jack Jenkins. It's got to be parlay. I'm Josh Cooley, though. Oh, that's a good one. Josh, Josh Cooley, though. 
Josh Cooley about. Oh, that, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. right. That's Ricardo cool. Ramos was a 29-28 decision. <laughs> and, and Cooley, about, Cooley about is nothing in the third round. <laughs> Except a lot of movement. <laughs> <laughs> Except a lot of moving around. Um, I will take Gamrod as the parley buster. No, I think I Hooker... Hooker lands some shots early, uh, frustrates Gamrot. Gamrot can't totally work the work the takedowns. Um, wouldn't surprise me if the ref jumps in. The the crowd could be a big mm. factor in this one. If Gamrot's wrestling and it's not going well, great I could, point because it's yeah. Hooker at home. Great point, man. Yeah. So, um, uh, Parley Buster. All right. So that's a Parley Buster. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. These are the bets that at the end of the night we're left there going, God, why didn't we just lay the house on uh, on that one? What's your woulda, coulda, shoulda? What's the one that we're going to regret not laying the, the farm on? Mm-hmm. we got to get the line on Jack Jenkins by finish. I'm sure it's not going to be crazy stupid. Um I'll go with Luana Santos. Oh, okay. K- Casey O'Neill comes out and just looks just as bad. <laughs> and, you know, the yeah. eight and one rising star just <laughs> manhandles her uh, and she can't compete in the wrestling. And we go, gosh, man, we could have got her under minus 200. Good number. And yeah, I'll go. I'll go Luana Santos. All right. All right. You're going Luana Santos. Um, I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with Steve Urseg. Oh, I thought you were taking Prades. This is good. I was I was going to go Prades by KO, but uh, I'm going to go with Urseg in that you have a guy that <laughs> arguably could have beaten, not arguably, he could have beaten Pantoja, mm-hmm. and now we're getting him at a pretty decent price against Kaikar France. This could be the one on his home territory. Like, this is kind of like a thank you fight. It feels like, like, thank you, Ursag, for taking mm-hmm. on Pantoja and doing your best. You got Kai Car France, who loses by finish to Moreno, loses to Albazi. Granted, it was a, you know, it was a pretty good, uh, it was a pretty good fight. You could argue that uh, France could have won, but Ursag, man, he's looked good. He's he's got better the... striking than Albazi. It's just, yeah, exactly. So. Ursag's got the better. I think he's got, got the much better striking, and I don't think Kaikar France has a ground game. So I think we could be sitting there looking at an Ursag dominant decision, going, "God, dang! Why didn't we, why didn't we lay the farm on Ursag?" Kaikar France. Yeah, we had a chance to bet against Kaikar France. My I, I, the close second was Carlos Prates by knockout. Mm-hmm. I was even going to pick the 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 method of victory over Leach, but um, yeah, yeah, the Jenkins and Nolan, those are just two obvious those are not those are not ones that we uh i guess canon song i guess you probably could have fit in that category but again i feel like it's i feel like it's pretty obvious we made a pretty good case to fade the plumber Mm -hmm. um so all right that is going to do it for us for the ufc 305 breakdown thanks very much don't forget to the like button and the subscribe button and follow all, all of our plays Good luck in your plays. And don't forget, uh, join the Discord channel. Just look up Winning in the Shadows Discord, having some fantastic uh, free plays, great discussion. Uh, crush the Olympics. I, I got to say, shout out to the Discord channel. Yeah. They did so. They all did so. These weren't even our plays. These are nope. just like, be like, oh, yeah, you guys notice the, the lines uh, bad on the hurdles? Like the hurdles. The caches. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's a great Discord channel. My favorite thing is it's all positivity. That's my favorite part about it. It's people, uplifting people, trying to get better uh, as sports better. So join the Winning in the Shadows uh, Discord. Good luck on your plays. Don't forget to check out all of our other breakdowns. We'll have the PFL video up soon. Good luck, and we'll see you over later. See you later, guys.